Word up, Georgia Japan here with another culture video. And I've been asked, what is Japanese comedy? And how has it changed over the years? I thought finding my answer to this would be easy peasy lemon squeezy, but it was actually difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. I spent the day thinking it over, and I overanalyzed everything, and I kept going off on tangents, and I wasn't able to draw a clear conclusion, so I'm gonna throw all that stuff out, and I'm just gonna talk. What is Japanese comedy? It's absurd novelty. <laughs> there's no deeper meaning, there's no political message, there's no mention of global problems. There's no dissing unless it's directly at another comedian. There's no stereotypes. Oh, I guess there are some stereotypes. Anyway, on the whole, I think it's just harmless silliness. And that's why I like it. It's a distraction. It's an escape from everyday daily life. Japan is a country where conformity is ingrained in the culture. Wear this. Behave like this. Speak like this. Social expectations are stricter in Japan. And maybe, as a result, this is why people find this kind of absurdity so appealing. It wasn't always like this, though. Looking back to the early 1900s, Dakugo was the most popular form of comedy. Dakugo is this kind of traditional style of storytelling. It's anecdotal at times and can be sentimental. And a lot of attention is paid to every minuscule detail. The clothes they wear, the way they speak, even movement. It's a very traditional form of comedy. It would later be surpassed by modern manzai. Now, manzai is a traditional form of comedy, but it was modernized by Yoshimoto in the 1930s. It was made to embrace more Western ideas, most obviously wearing suits. But it wouldn't surpass Dakugo until after World War II, a time when Japan was more willing to accept foreign ideas. I think manzai's popularity and comedy on the whole grew with Japan's economic recovery peaking in the late 80s, early 90s during Japan's bubble economy. It was a time of loose morals and grandeur, and I think that reflected very much in its comedy. It was kind of the golden age of Japanese TV. Manzai comedians were elevated to idol status, and shows like Takeshi's Castle would shock the whole world. Following these crazy game shows came sketch comedy shows. And although these sketch comedy shows were wildly popular, you don't really see these kinds of shows anymore. Why is that? Well, they're really expensive to produce. Sets and costumes might only be used once, but they're expensive. And when Japan's economy started to hit a crisis level near the end of the 90s, these shows began to disappear. And these kind of panel shows started taking over. They're much cheaper to produce, and they get the same ratings. And I don't think they'll disappear from Japan anytime soon. Though there still are really big specials, I don't think you see this kind of stuff every week because, well, it's just too expensive to produce. And I guess that kind of brings us towards the, the present day. I gotta get going. I did want to talk a little bit about the one-hit wonder comedians, but maybe I'll do that in, a, in another video. Anyways, so in conclusion, I think Japanese comedy is this absurd silliness, and maybe it's because of all the conformity that's ingrained in the culture that this silliness can be so appealing. And as for how comedy changed, I think it went from being more traditional to being more free form. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Um, I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and have a glorious day.